So we are going to do a little bit more hanging out today. Let me get rid of this sound here. Um, so come on in and join. Let's, I'm going to put a little post here on Twitter. All right. I don't know why when I put my Twitch thing up there, it, it links to, or it says my son and I play Rocket League, which is like a video I did like three years ago. Super strange. So I don't know how to change that. Um, but I'll keep an eye on the chat room and uh, just see how that goes. Let me actually just put an addendum to this. Okay, don't know why, again, I don't know why it does that. All right, so, um, Hey, Druid's Fire, back again for more. I didn't bore you off the first time, so that's good. Um, okay, let me make sure we got everything going here. You can see this, you can see this. Um, so we are going to just keep plowing through this. I've made a couple of changes to it from yesterday. Uh, added pretty colors. There's that. That's beautiful. And then the blue down here, also beautiful. Um, and then we're gonna just see where, where it takes us today. Um, I added some strings here, um, so I'll be ready to go to add some, uh, just a couple string elements that I've been thinking about, and then, um, that should be fun. So, uh, Druid's Fire made a good point. Hey, what's going on? Man, is that Blob Dole? That's hilarious. Blob Dole. Um, so Drew's Fire had a good point yesterday. She reached out to me on Twitter and just told me maybe I should just walk through my setup and people might be interested in that. And of course, if you have any questions about, um, things that I'm using, software plugins, anything like that, feel free to uh, reach out and I would be happy to, uh, explain or just, uh, pipe up in the chat here, uh, on Twitch and I can, uh, try to answer those questions. So. I'm using Logic right now that you're using, uh, you're seeing Logic Pro. Uh, I'm on a Mac, I'm on an old uh, Mac Pro, the old cheese grater towers before they switched to that black uh, trash can looking thing. So um, I am using that. Um, it's pretty ma tricked out um, from, I'll show you a little bit of the specs here if you're interested. Um, if you can see that, it is mid-2012. It has 64 gigabytes of memory, which is maxed out for this machine. And um, I take quite a bit of it. Um, let me show you, actually, real quick. So 64 gigabytes of memory, and then I have four internal hard drives. It's a 2 times 2.4 gigahertz 6-core Intel Xeon processor. I don't really know what all that means. So some of you guys probably do. I don't. So uh, let me show you something. I know 64 gigabytes sounds like a lot. Eh, maybe it is. Um, but we are going to go to the utilities. Let me show you the activity monitor. So right now, if you look at my memory usage, so right now, if you can see this uh, on here, I'm actually using 60 of the 64 gigabytes in memory right now. Um, and 45 of those gigabytes is Vienna Ensemble Pro. Let me bring that in here. Vienna Ensemble Pro is this little guy. And what I'm doing is I'm actually hosting um, all my orchestral sounds in here. So here are... 
this is like where I host my sus sustain strings, uh, legato strings are in here, and I'm running a few different string libraries as I blend them together. Um, LA scoring strings, I have some Berlin strings and some Spitfire strings, and so those are in there. But then I have another window where I'm hosting different string articulations, such as tremolo, um, and then I have, and maybe even, uh, I think I have some sustained um, non-vibrato, like harmonic uh, textures in that string articulations as well. And then string short, that's where I have the pizzicato and the spiccato and the staccato strings. And then we have a woodwinds window where I'm um, running a lot of Spitfire woodwinds. And then the brass window where I'm running cine brass and some Hollywood brass. So that's a lot going on for that. But all of those take up... Um, about 45 gigabytes of memory in addition to everything else I'm running. So 64 gigabytes of memory sounds like a lot, but it really um, it really gets eaten up pretty quick when you load in a full orchestral template. Okay. Oh, the Durst. Look at that. Uh, what's going on? It's like a little Wild Star reunion over here. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, very cool. So let's take a look um, and a listen and see what's going on here. So here's where we left off yesterday. I'm just going to play it uh, up to here, and we'll just see. And if you're at home or wherever, just relax, enjoy. You don't have to watch. You can just listen to the dulcet tones of my velvet voice and, uh, and the music that we're creating here. Uh, so let's check it out. Here's where we are. Okay, so that's where we left off yesterday. Um, let's see. Yes, the last Ross reunion. Yes, everyone did cry. Well, it was a that was a touching moment there, as we all. There were people, honestly, at Druid's Fire stream. Uh, I was bouncing around between a couple different um, streams of people on Wildstar's last day, and um, when I went into uh, Druid's Fire's um, stream, the chat was full of coworkers that I had not seen in. A long time you know years for some of them and it was really cool um just to have have those moments right we were together as like a, a family again and uh that was very cool and i know that that was happening all throughout people's streams um but it was fun to jump in uh jump in that stream and just see not see but virtually see a lot of people that um that i really enjoyed working with over the years um and fortunately all the people i did not enjoy working with over the years weren't there so it worked out great uh, I'm just kidding. I worked. I loved working with uh, almost everybody. Okay, so uh, you made the triplets slower in tempo. I, I didn't necessarily make them slower. I, I actually haven't touched any of the stuff I did yesterday, other than adding um, these string channels over here. But I haven't. Uh, I didn't slow them down. But maybe it just sounds slower because, well, it's been 24 hours since you've heard it. Um, but oh man, look, we're up to eight people rolling 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 we're killing it now um rick beato better watch out man i'm at eight people he's at like five million 
Okay, we'll get there. Slow but steady wins the race. Okay, so listen, I really like this piece of music so far. Um, you know, there's maybe some things I might change as time goes on, but um, but that's where we are. And so what I wanted to do is, uh, this is a slow burn, like I explained yesterday. Um, I want it to build and start to just gain some um, moment momentum. Um, but there's something I really do like about this progression and that is the, the baseline. So what I want to do is, um, I want to accentuate that baseline by using string basses now. Hopefully that all, you guys can hear that. All right. All right. So I'm going to bring in these string basses. All I'm going to do here is starting at uh, measure 25 is I'm going to going to play the bass line and so here we go let's take a listen oh I should show you you can't really see it with this camera so let me show you, sorry, I'll do it one more time, but I'm gonna move this down. I have this overhead camera thing. I'm gonna move it down so that you can see my mod wheel here. Nope, I gotta go a little bit further. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I got. A, here's the thing, man, I got a, a huge Lego collection up here. That's what's really keeping this stream from being exciting is all the Legos. All the Legos. All right, you can kind of see this wheel here. I'm gonna go a little bit further. Okay, so this little guy right here, um, that's what we're gonna pay attention to. So what you're gonna hear is I'm using this mod wheel as a as a volume kind of you know rider. So you can, if you can hear that. All right. So we're going to take it one more time. Um, oh yeah. I should show it. One day I'll show you this Lego collection up here. It's, it's a little insane. It's not really, it doesn't really, there's no theme. It's just some of my favorite little characters and stuff I've collected. I got like Hercules from the Disney movie and Jack Skellington. And I got a hot dog salesman and a, a rocket man. That's a sheriff. It's just a bunch of cool little, and then I got a bunch of like the back cave is up there. A bunch of stuff up there. We'll get there. All right. So let's do these bases. I'm gonna start soft. I'm gonna slowly build in. Ease it back down. So every two notes, I'm just kind of riding it. So all I did there was, um, yeah, just added those bases. So you can see, I'm going to show you that velocity curve, um, not velocity, the volume curve I just did uh, here with the mod wheel. All right, so you can see these notes come in, and basically I'm just making little mountain peaks every two bars, um, just to have that feeling of swelling in and then kind of push, pulling back. Um, so I want to give it a little bit more punch. So this is a common trick. Um, a lot of it happens a lot in orchestration. And it's kind of a cheap way to get um, a solid bass line is just copying the basses up to the cellos and then moving it up an octave because they don't play often. Um, the basses can sound an octave lower. So we're going to put these in octaves. I'm going to put them up there in the cellos. And so now we get a little bit extra pad on, on that bass line. Might be too much actually. We'll take a listen.
I, I like that. There was a, a note that really stuck out here. That one. So we're just gonna, gonna kind of curb that a little bit so it doesn't stick out as much. Yeah, and so um, I just want, again want to accent that bass line a little bit, and I think what we got is something um, that really starts to to work pretty well. Um, I'm going to trim that off at the beginning here. These little extra non-essential pieces of information, and then I'm going to put this here. Okay, so I feel like right here we have one more section here that I want to add something to, but I feel like once we get to measure 41, we might have reached our limit. Um, from an audience standpoint of us as, as our our patience for this progression. Um, I personally could probably listen to it, you know, for like about 10 minutes straight. But um, we need to start, even though we're adding some elements to, uh, I, I think our ears are ready for something uh, something new. It, maybe it's even just a little, a little different versions of these chords or maybe it goes somewhere completely um, different. So um, I don't know what that is yet. That's why we're here to find out. It's going to be going to be cool. Um, but I want to add one more little thing here at bar 33. Um, you can see how we've sort of stacked it, right? We have this. Oops. Didn't mean to actually drag it. We have this here and then we added the piano. And then while the piano got a little busier here, we also added the organ. And then now we've added the bases, and I just want to add one more, one more thing. And uh, I'm not sure what it is, but maybe it'll hit me on this next pass here. Let's take a listen. I think I got it. Oh, I'm also getting a phone call. I don't know how to do that. How do I take a phone call? I'm using my phone as my camera. Oh man, it could be really important. No. I don't know what that is. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see who it is. Real quick. Alright, I'll have to grab it. I'll have to grab it again later. Alright, we still we still good? Everyone's still tracking with me? Alright, let's fix this camera. I'll put it back the way it kind of was. Okay. So I actually have like a, right now my phone is just kind of carefully set there, but, uh, but I don't have like a cool stand, but I did order one on Amazon, but it's sort of like anyone's guess when that might show up right now because they're shipping, you know, obviously essential items to people. Um, and a little, you know, camera stand is not an essential item. I mean, well, for me it is, um, but it's not essential obviously for the world or is it maybe this music brings the world together i don't think so but maybe all right so here's what i want to do um when listening through that last time i kind of want to add a little bit of choir just some oohs and ahs i think that might be nice so let's try it might be it also could be a little heavy-handed right um so i'm going to go to uh what am i going to spitfire audio the eric whitaker choir it's very beautiful um they did a good job with this, I think. Um, let's see if I have any. Uh, let's see if I have any um, memory to bring it out. I guess it worked, so I still have some left. Okay. A little much. So let's do some. Ooh, maybe. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the ooh, but I'm I'm again, I'm gonna. If you can see my hand over here, I'm gonna ride this modulation wheel that's gonna allow this to go up and down. You can see there.
that's not our song, but that'd be cool if it was. Okay, here we go. Let's add it in. Let's see. How do we want to add it in? Though? That's a good question. Can't just go charging in, right? So let's figure it out. Okay. We got some. We have a lot of low stuff, right? The organ is low. The strings are low. So let's go a little higher with this choir. So I'm not going to mess with this down here. Right now, I'm going to focus mostly up here. And just making sure that everyone can still see. Yeah, you can still kind of see my hand up there. All right. So we're going to focus mainly on that. Okay. Again, if you remember from yesterday, the really the main uh, part of this piece is just this rocking back and forth between F and E. F and E. And all I'm doing is harmonizing that motion in a couple different ways. So uh, I'm going to focus on that with the choir too. So I'm just going to play through it without recording it. Um, just see what kind of comes up. It. I, I think I maybe I want to do something a little different. Just instead of the F and E, I might want to just change it up a bit. Okay. Oh, so in doing that. At least for me, right? This is not everyone's process. And sometimes I actually do sit down with like paper and pen and try to figure it all out. Um, if you've seen those Wild Star notebooks of all the sketches, I do spend a lot of time here. But um, for something like this, I actually think it's a lot of fun just to noodle around and just see, um, just throw ideas out there and see what happens. And it's not the sexiest of, uh, of processes, but I feel like I sneeze. But it does, um, it is. I think worthwhile experiment. So if, if you're a composer out there, it's sort of like just writing. If you're an author, um, just picking up a blank sheet of paper and just start writing and just see what happens. And I think that's a great way to at least get the juices flowing and, and just get used to the rhythms of that creative process, uh, no matter what sort of creativity it is. And it's, it's the same here. Um, so I tried that and I really didn't like it, but in doing that and trying that, and um, what I found is that I think I like something that's going to start to create a little bit more of a, of emotion, uh, not emotion, a little bit more motion underneath or within, um, within that. So let me see if I can try to articulate musically what I'm trying to articulate verbally, because right now both are not really coming out that well. Something like that. So you see, it kind of just has this like rising sort of steady pattern to it. Um, I'm gonna try it one more time as I'm still kind of getting getting used to somehow uh, my sort of my personal emotional sounding board is still trying to figure out um, what it likes and doesn't like. Um, so let's let me just play through one more time. So just, again, trying some things. That time I started on F here and tried to work my way up. But before time before that, I started on A, the third of the chord, and I actually liked that better.
So I loved everything about that. I gotta figure out. I gotta land there. Okay, let's see if I remember what I just did. It's kind of a bummer. I should have been recording that whole time. Let's see if I remember. Because I really like that. That wasn't quite it. I thought it was going to be an A, but then I heard it and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Okay, so I'm going to label this choir. I'm pretty happy with that. I, you know, I thought this was, I may at some point go back and, and sort of just futz with some of those notes uh, just from choices but I really I, I like that um, and I think I am gonna add just these I don't know if they really come through but I'm gonna add some of these guys uh, the choir down trim off this excess stuff that I don't need save okay now let's just take a quick listen through from beginning to end it's about two minutes we're about yeah two minutes long right now let's just take a couple minutes and just see how it builds and uh, I'm gonna kind of see where it feels like I might want to go next in that organ. Just adds a little, I don't know, just, just a little fluff to it, like a fluffy cloud. It just kind of gives it this pulse, which I like. And we have those strings, the bass strings.
so that's where we are. Uh, oh, hey, Sarah's from France, man. Hey, listen, Sarah's is a super talented. I don't know, I'm sure if I'm saying that right. Sarah, is it Saris? Saris? I never actually had to enunciate it. I've only ever had to read it in email. Um, very talented composer and musician. Um, and he sent me some stuff when I was working on uh, at Carbine Wildstar, and it was just awesome. Uh, so maybe one day our paths will cross uh, as composer retypes, but that would be awesome. Um, but talented composer uh, in his own right. Saris, 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 Saris. I keep wanting to make it what it's not. Saris, Saris. It's not really that uh, fancy. I mean, it is fancy, but I'm trying to put more emphasis on it. Okay, so. All right, let's go somewhere else. So I'm going to go back to these two channels that I had. Um, again, this is the Intimate Textures from uh, Heaviosity. And uh, I actually just got these uh, a couple weeks ago. So this is the first time I've ever used them. And it's just a chance for me to kind of play around with it a little bit. But... It's just these cool string textures. Um, so this one has a little bit of uh, a little bit of stuff in it but uh, let's see can you hear this here how it's got just those, some of that bowing movement at different times and it's a little randomized and I think when you put those two together it just adds a really nice um, a really nice texture when you combine them so um, we've had this progression again like I've said Many times I really do like that progression, but now I think I want to just try to go somewhere, somewhere else with it. So if I, So after this G, we can go a bunch of different places. And so, I'm just not sure if we should make it go darker or brighter or happier. So, I think we could totally switch and all of a sudden kind of make a left turn. We can kind of go to a darker. along those lines let's see which I did like I like going to the, went to a D minor um, so the reason I like going to D minor there um, I, I like one I like the way it sounded but two we haven't heard that chord yet I've heard we've heard F and B flat and C and G and a minor we haven't heard a D minor chord yet so it's gonna feel sort of new and and the ear is going to catch it, whether we realize it or not. The ear catches it as like, I haven't heard that before. There's a different tonality there. Okay, and then you just got to figure out where it wants to go. And I think, um, I think music kind of just like when you're writing or imagine when you're painting, if you have a blank sheet of paper, you just start. And I think it things start to take shape in a certain way. And so, um, again, I do think there's a time and a place to write things out and have it all strict and charted and, and be writing with pen and paper um, for music. But I I like this exercise of just sort of, you know, thought dough and just sort of noodling around and seeing what happens. Uh, I think some, I've had some great success with, with ideas that come from that. So I also, just thinking about the arc of the piece, I've only kind of stuck right here with the melody. All right, it's not even really a melody, it's just texture. All right, so now I want to start, I need to, I need to get up here somehow. Uh, let's see, let's see. 
But again, I want to try and use chords that we haven't done before. Here's the other thing I really like. Um, I'll try and do this too. Um, I really like displaced tension. So I, maybe I'll go through it with some of that score I did from this documentary called The Girl Who Wore Freedom. Um, but there's a lot of that displaced tension. So rather than have these two notes together, which sounds you know, tense and harsh. We can have an E and an F, but displace them by putting the F an octave lower. And now that the same two notes, as long as we pull them apart and put them and make them a seventh or a ninth, a major seventh or something like a minor ninth or something like that, what happens is that tension sort of gets diffused by the space between them. Um, and it starts to become beautiful, but it still has that tension. So it's just sort of like this beautiful tension. So there's it's just something kind of nice about that. So if we went to this the F to the D minor. If you can catch what I'm doing there, um, that just sort of came to mind. But it's a little predictable, but I actually really do like it. And I think it gives, it starts to give a cadence to the form of this music here in the middle where it sort of needs, it needs something to kind of snap to um, or sort of align with. And I think a, a shorter, more predictable melody might give us uh, something to, to really latch on to. So all I'm doing is this D minor. And then now I have this displaced tension between the B flat down here and the A up here. So rather than those two notes, I'm getting it displaced over two octaves. And then I'm playing an E. This is one of my favorite things to do actually, is this E, a third of the chord over the suspended version of the chord. So the third is the E, but I'm suspending the chord with an F here. So you get that dissonance. But it's excuse me, it's buried in the middle of this of this harmonic texture, which I I really like. So um so let's try it. So I'm actually I'm actually gonna save the melody for something else, I think. I'm just gonna just gonna do the chords here. On this patch. Okay. So I I like it, but as I'm playing it, I feel like I want to anticipate part of the next chord. And I'll show you what I mean by that. As I'm playing the C, so one one part of the chord is moving and kind of anticipating where the the change is going to happen. So let's just try that. D minor. Anticipating the B flat, and then gonna move up to the F. D minor. You'll notice I, I did an F over A in that last section, which I actually liked um, too. 
So I'm always on the lookout for inversions or ways just to introduce something different without drastically changing the tonality, especially in a piece like this. Subtle color changes are really where it's at. Um, so I'm going to copy that down. Remember, these two tracks are working um, in, together um, to make one texture. So, uh, and then I'm going to tighten them up there. Now, if we take our strings, all right, I'm going to go up there. So let's just try it. Here's, I'm going to put the melody in the string. Didn't I? What did I do? Oh, wait. Oh, no. Right. All right. Got it now. Sorry about that. Here we go. We anticipate the melody, too. Just brought the melody in before it was necessary. So I really like that. I think it's a, a nice texture. And then um, we should keep this, this choir going for sure. Because they've, they've, we brought them in, right? We want to maybe just have them just stay where they are. So um, let's see, is this music just having fun or for project? Uh, this is just me having fun. So a couple days ago, I think last week, I came up with that original progression. We heard it in the first half and I just recorded it. All I had was this part right here, these first eight bars. And I just sat on it. I really didn't know what to do with it. Um, and I thought once everyone started you know, staying at home, um, I realized that I still need to do stuff. Um, I don't have a a whole lot I'm working on right now and I'd like to keep writing and if everyone is stuck at home looking for things to occupy their time then maybe uh, this would be a cool chance for me to get to know people and then to get to know me and I could sort of just you know um, work on this music live in front of everybody because that's what normal people do right that's not uh, scary at all um, so it is a little intimidating to do this live, but I also think, one, it could be a, a, a source of encouragement for anyone who is maybe working on music or just wants to listen to some ideas as I, as I ramble on about my thought process. But two, um, it could be um, people who just like listening to music, maybe just interested in how track, a track comes together and the different elements that go into it. So um, that's it, just me kind of doing that. So what I'm going to do on this choir. I didn't have a free hand, so I could not do the mod wheel. You remember how we did that? So I couldn't do that. So right now it's all just very static and staying in one place. Um, and I, I don't want that. I want. I really do want it to swell. So I'm just going to draw in um, these swells. And it's a little cheaty just to draw it in, but eh. I'm more interested in time right now. So what I'm doing is just making it nice, kind of gradual curves. And then, there we go. 
All right. So now you'll hear you you you, you will hear the choir swell in. So that just adds a, a nicer effect. It feels more, more realistic. Okay, I didn't love this clash here though. So I'm gonna do. This. I'm actually gonna maybe just turn that there. There. So all I'm doing is I'm, uh, I had a, a quite a lot going on between the B flat and the A between the melody and everything else. So now I'm trying to get the choir up and out of that, that mire of dissonance, which is beautiful. But once we add too much to it, it starts to turn, um, like moldy bread. It's good for a little bit, but once you go past a certain point, you don't want part of it. So now the choir is getting up and above it, which is nice, and stepping it back down. I think it's just it's just a nicer situation there okay cool um so i don't want to drag this out man it's been 47 minutes so um i'm just going to add one more thing that i think might be interesting and give us a good a good place to wrap up today and, and give us a good springboard for tomorrow and that is right here i want to add some kind of boomy percussiony thing um so i'm going to go to a tried and true little tool bag um of percussion uh, I'm gonna go to this thing called the epic dole drum tone hammer epic dole library and we're gonna do now this drum is kind of big sounding and that's okay because we're gonna we are going to um, kind of put a harness on it with EQ. So I really don't want to hear that sharp attack. I really don't want all that. I do like kind of the the power behind it. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna play it in I'm gonna play it in the way it is, but then I'm gonna take this EQ and I'm gonna start really rolling off the highs and accenting some of the more of the booms. So um, let's try that. But I'm gonna play it the way it is right now. And um, I don't know exactly what the rhythm is going to be. This is another thing where I'm just going to kind of test it and see. Um, but I think there's some possibilities here. But I, I really do love playing percussion and rhythm. And a lot of times, even in the Wildstar days, um, the rhythm and the percussion and the drums were just sort of... Um, uh, they were just sort of made up on the spot. I wasn't really thinking about charting it out. Um, I think there's it breathes a certain amount of life into a track when the rhythm and the, and the percussion is, is a little bit freer and, um, and has, you know, if you had 12 guys playing hand drums, um, there would be some variation and some accents and some things like that. So, um, I like, I think that adds a certain amount of life and freedom to it. So let's find, uh, let's find something that works here. I want it to be sparse. So I don't want it to be real busy. I do want it to be certain, uh, sparse. keys to here. Just want to find a couple keys that I like. Here we go. I think it'll work for now. Let's just kind of see where it goes. So I don't want to quantize it, but there was a, I hit a, 
I had a key that didn't do much for me. It was this one. So let's just put it there. Okay. So here's what I do want to do. I'm going to solo it. Now I'm going to start just trying to draw out some of those higher ends. Some of the mud here. Okay, and then I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna send it to some reverb, and I have a reverb set up from the strings, and then here. bring back some of that low end it's that doesn't really maybe represent itself as well in headphones but let's see what happens here when you add it with the track Sorry, says uh, horns and mega epic drums. Ah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get there. So uh, we're going to leave it there for today. But I, I like that feeling. Um, I think it needs to add a, a even lower kind of that trailer drum. I need uh, maybe one of those right at the downbeat where this happens. And then maybe just sprinkle it out. Just to kind of let it uh, lift a little bit. Um, those big booms do help to, to separate it out. And I like that. But I, I like where this is heading. I like where it's going. I feel like it's got a, a cool energy to it. Um, and it's very, um, very, I'll say, I'll say this. It lends itself to really being built over time. So, you know, we're at um, giant time display. We're at three minutes and 12 seconds is where we are so far. And most of that has just been building on one. Uh, progression and then now we just got to our second progression and there's still plenty of stuff we can do to build right we can get to if you remember um the track reaching from wildstar um very subtle and then it just built and built and then we added brass towards the end and it just it became magical and i kind of have the same vision for this where um you, we can add you know some some brass in later but i want to i want to take our time getting there because i think when we we have those arrival points. I think it's going to be a lot more meaningful to take our time and to get there. Um, because as we set up this anticipation through repetition, what it does is it creates this sort of longing in the soul because you want, you can feel almost like a roller coaster when you're going up, you can feel your, your soul start to be like, oh, yeah. And what's next and what's next and what's next. And as we start to give those little pieces out slowly, without it's it's a fine balance right it's just like writing a plot in a novel a fine balance of how many details do you want to give and when do you want to get to the action because too many details you're going to lose people not enough details you're going to lose people so you really have to walk this balance and it's just good to have um have that process of listening to it and playing it for other people and so this is really fun to have you guys in here um seeing what it's like so um we're going to leave it here for today and then um, tomorrow, we'll come back and we'll start adding some more stuff and we'll see where this goes. Um, and then when this is all done, I'm just going to throw this up. You guys can download it and, and do whatever you want with it. Um, but I think it's going to be cool. I'm really excited about where this is going. And um, I really appreciate you guys uh, being with me and sticking with me. So um, this is my longest live stream to date. Well, it's my second live stream. Also my longest. So... Um, if you missed it, any part of it, you, I'm going to throw it up on YouTube later and you can check it out. But um, I'll try to be back tomorrow and we can work on this some more. Uh, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. And we'll see you later. Bye.